James Callanan is hitting the campaign trail this week as part of Now TV's Hurl vs Hurley campaign which will see the nation vote on what is the definitive term for a hurler's most prized possession. The results of the poll will be revealed to the public on November 12th. To have your say visit hurlvhurley.com where you can cast your vote right now. I'm sure we're agreed it's a hurley. The hurling tip anyway, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not gone that long, do you still remember that? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Anytime I hear a lad say hurly, hurl up here in Dublin, I just sort of wince. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be kind of a Leinster thing, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It needs to be stamped out. Um, tough couple of days, Shane, after, after the Limerick game. Probably just jump straight to it. I'd say it was a tough dressing room afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Um, sure, look, Shane, we have a very self-motivated group. Uh, with another with a great management team and we set fierce high standards for ourselves and just unfortunately we didn't get anywhere near those standards uh on sunday evening and against a team of the caliber of limerick that's you know they, you get punished then when you make when you make errors and you don't perform you just don't win those games and, and and that's ultimately what it came down to you know yeah and if i start with some of the positives that uh, assist you had for the goal for jake morris can you talk me through what you were seeing? Obviously, there was, um, I think, did you dispossess uh, Declan Hannon or someone dispossessed Declan Hannon and you got the ball? Yeah, I don't know. Somehow, somehow it just kind of broke into my path and I was kind of coming from um, the wing forward position and I came onto it and uh, got a good run through the middle. I suppose it was kind of the last second I really saw Jake's movement and um, I was half kind of nearly had the ball turn up to put over the bear and I kind of just shoved it on because um, I saw he was in a good position and you know, thankfully Jake did the rest. He's a great finisher. So, um, look, it was an important stage of the game, and I suppose it was just really, uh, you know, a huge kick in the teeth. I suppose to concede the goal off the puck out straight away because you know we were playing against a gale four swind, and in those conditions, that kind of I think that had left a point in it. I think it was nine yeah. points to one five at the time, and uh, then and the goal straight away was just you know a real a real killer then straight away. But um, look, that's. That's the, the joys of it, isn't it? It is indeed. And have you ever played in conditions quite as bad as that before? Uh, I, th I think it was the worst, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. It was just, it just it was relentless, like it never stopped. But look, it's it's not an excuse. It, it was bad, but it was bad for both teams. And, yeah. you know, they they seem to be able to still play their game. Like, so it's no excuse, but um, yeah, the conditions weren't, weren't hectic. Anyway. Yeah, so the draw obviously came out Monday morning, Tipperary get a bye. Like, you've been down this road before 2010, 2019, and other years where it obviously hasn't led to an All-Ireland final. What, what's the sort of thing that you do when, you, when you've when been knocked out of Munster? Like, what's the process? Do you just sit down and say, it's not the end of the world? Self-reflection, what do you do? Well, look, Shane, to be honest with you, I think, like, there's probably going to be a lot of um, people looking at it and, you know, maybe giving out for the week about it, but um, we just don't have that time. And, you know, the qualifiers, it's such a hectic, you know, and thing, and there's so many good teams trying into a mix there now that you literally have to kind of take your day to, to mourn what happened on Sunday and obviously take a lot of lessons from it and try and learn from it. But um, ultimately, it's about getting back on the horse this week and to really put in a, a hard week's training to... To get to a stage where you can hopefully hopefully rectify a lot of the things that that went wrong on Sunday, and you know we're in a very fortunate position that we can do that. Like you know, you look at the football championship, and they don't have it; they don't have a choice. You know, you have that performance, and you wake up Monday morning, and, and that's it, and your year is finished. So, like we're very lucky to have a chance to to put that right, and um, you know, I full confidence in the group that we have uh, that we can do that. But it's going to take you know a lot of hard work and. I suppose when the draw came out Monday morning, you were itching for a game straight away. You know, you wanted to be in that game, you know, this Saturday or whatever. So you could just get back going again and, and put it to bed. But, you know, I suppose now on reflection, maybe maybe having the two weeks isn't the worst thing either. And you can kind of get a bit more work into the bodies and just, I suppose, a bit of time to recover as well. And But, you know, you don't have that much time for reflection. And, you know, it's not something you want to reflect on. You know, you have to look back and... And, and acknowledge it for being a, a poor performance and, and nowhere near the levels we, we set for ourselves. But at the same time, you know, it's time now to move on and, and, and look forward again. Yeah. And do you think there's any particular reason that Limerick proved such a stumbling block for Tipperary? Because um, the last couple of years in the games that have really mattered, you know, we'll ignore the dead rubber last year, Tip have found it tough. Yeah, look, I think Limerick are a fantastic team. You know, they really are at the top of their game and... You know, they're, they're favourites for an All Ireland this year, and, and rightfully so on, on performances. And they seem to be kind of in cruise control a bit at the moment. But um, it's up to the rest of us to try and get up to that standard. And I think it's down to 
a lot of it is down to how hard they work too. Like they're they put in a fierce craft every one of them, like and you know they do that every day. And their subs that come on, their panel that come on, they know that you know they have to impress and and they want to make a difference when they come on. And and I think it's back to basics, really. You know, if you don't have that work rate and you don't have that intensity in your play, then you know the nice free flow in Ireland that comes after that. It just you're not in a position to be able to do that. So I think you have to just get back to the the build of blocks of what makes what makes a team click. And I think that's just you know the high work rate, tackle count, and the intensity in the game. And unfortunately, we we weren't at the levels uh, in those areas that we need to be to compete with a team like Limerick on Sunday evening. So we just need to get that right for the next day, whoever comes. Because if I want to look at the positive side of things, I think, right, getting that bye week, maybe it's a chance for Seamus, uh, Seamus Kennedy to come back, maybe Paddy Maher has a bit more training, maybe Bonner's back in, I don't know if Bonner's back in the fold, and one win and you're back into an All-Ireland quarter final, and if you win that game, obviously things will feel a bit more positive, so it's, it's you could say yeah. it's the end of the world after the manner of the defeat, but it's, the flip side is one win and you're back in contention. Well, that's it too, and you know, you're in a similar position after one win, um, John, than it would have been anyway if you got to the Munster final and, and you know so like I think it's it's just we're lucky to be in the position that we're in and um, after a performance like that and look the next day is a big challenge like the next day is an all Ireland final and every day after that it's an all Ireland final if you get a chance to play in it because you know it's it's knockout now and but I do believe Tipperary hurled their best in knockout championship and you know that brings knockout hurling brings just a different dimension again and it kind of you know, your backs to the walls kind of stuff like and it's how you how you go about coming out fighting from that. Um that you know, it's the first game I suppose we'll see, you know, what reaction you get from from the panel now with the next day and um performance wise and that and you know, you either sink or swim at this stage and if you get over that first hurdle, you know, it opens up it opens up the championship again and, and hopefully try and build momentum. But the next hurdle is the only one you can think about now and, and, and getting back on track. And having the right man as the manager too, because Liam Sheedy has been down this road before. It's probably good to know that you don't have a manager who's a newbie or that might panic. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, Liam knows Liam knows what he has in that in the panel. I know, and you know, we we all know it was uh, the character that's in the panel that we have. Like you know, we have been down this road before. It's not to say that we know the the antidote for the journey or whatever. Like you know, there's no there's no real. Um, you know, we don't have any pluses over anyone else in that regard, but at the same time, we have been there, you know, we have hurt before and come back from that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you need that little bit of hurt to, to really drive performance again. And, and we have that in abundance now, and it's about circling the, the wagons, really, and, uh, and tightening up the group. And, uh, you know, we have a real cause here and, and you know, try and push on the next day. What was it like actually going down to play the match? And, you know, where were you getting togged out? Did you even get a chance to shower after getting drenched? Yeah, like it's it is a complete different animal. Like you know, it's, it's so strange, and it's um you know you're separated in a, in a few different dressing rooms, and you're you know uh, we're all driving down separately to down to Cork to the game, and you know it's just a very very strange feeling. Um, I'd say you just, like there's no talk at home about you know tickets or about you know usually the parents are planning on like they're gone before me really on match day, like you know just trying to be down there soaking an atmosphere and. There's none of that like and and look you do miss that but these are the times that we're in and, and at the same time you know we're very happy and very privileged to be involved in sport at this stage of the year with everything else that's going on it's um so like we don't take it for granted and it's uh look it's very strange the but the protocols that are there they need to be there to make it work and you know everyone has to just kind of get on with that and, and make it as safe as we can and, and if that's the way we we go about it you know that's that's what we need to do and did you get a chance to even shower after it or was it into the car <laughs> no we actually got um we we had um we had a, a hotel kind of there for, for us that we could have a, a room each kind of to shower and just it just opened up to let us do that as all um so it would have been if you know it was bleak enough drive home from cork anyway <laughs> it would have been a lot worse if you were freezing and and, and wet and and whatever else like so yeah uh, little help. <laughs> did you did you notice you know with the driving rain and all that maybe you weren't aware of it but were you did you notice that there's no atmosphere there's no crowd to the body yeah you would sure look you, you kind of you, you burst out the tunnel there before the game and you're kind of <laughs> used to getting the roar and you burst out and it's like all right you know <laughs> this is it so um which was strange i suppose we look we had it with the club like and and that but 
you know, club games there would be maybe only a, a couple of hundred or, you know, the bigger games maybe a couple of thousand, like so. Um, you do miss, look, you miss everything about match day, you know, you miss it being in the summer and, you know, going down through the square and Hurlis and, you know, thousands of people there following the bus in and you miss all those things. But, you know, this is, I suppose, as they say, the new normal and this is the way it has to be. So, um, but look, you have to self-motivate, as I said there, you have to, um, you have to find your kind of the reason why you, you do it and, you know, there's, there's a bigger picture here and, and everyone knows that. So, um, you just you get on with it and you, and you do what's best for everyone. Yeah, and I'm going to put the Tipperary supporters hat on for a minute and be like, you know, I keep hearing from people, oh, Tip can't do back-to-back, they won't like the winter conditions, they're, you know, tasty herders, they won't like it. Now, you know, not able for Limerick's physicality. I mean, this is the perfect time to, to ram that down to people's throats. Yeah, sure, look, you know, we're, we're, I suppose we have to win the honour last year, there's a lot of pats on the back going there for the last while. Now, you don't let it sink in, but at the same time, you know, you know, people, I suppose... Look, they give out to people like the supporters. They want what's best as well. Like they want Tipperary on the top at all times. And unfortunately, there's a lot of other counties that don't want that, and they're trying to stop that. So it doesn't always work out. But you know, we're still we're still alive in this championship. We're still there. And um, you know, let's see what the next few weeks brings. And uh, I'm sure it only it only it takes something small to to change um, the championship. It could be just one action, one goal, one little bit of luck. And all of a sudden, things open up again, and positivity comes back around the place again. But like, there's a lot of um, I haven't heard any of it. I don't really kind of get involved in any of it. I keep myself to myself. But um, you know, I just think there's a lot of negativity going around. Uh, I suppose the, of the whole country or whatever. Anyway, regardless of, of GA. So I think you know to have people talking about something different that isn't COVID or whatever, whether they're giving out about it or not. It's no harm to hear something different going on in here. Yeah, but look, Shamey, thanks very much for joining me and best of luck with the rest of the season. Yeah, thanks, Shane.